We talk about countless tools, systems, and desk setups designed to help us remain focused and productive as software engineers. However, one thing that very few people talk about is the importance of ergonomics in not only keeping you productive, but how it plays a huge role in your health and well-being as a software engineer. A recent study done on people with desk jobs found that around 2.78 million people die every year due to workplace-related diseases. Obviously, a major contributor to this is uh, pressure and stress, but bad ergonomic also plays a huge part. The number that surprised and worried me the most is that software engineers have a 77.5% chance of developing muscle or bone related problem. And as tragic as that number is, it does make sense because the nature of the software engineering job naturally involves long hours at your desk staring at the screen, which can gradually take a toll on your mental and physical health. So to that end, proper ergonomics is really an underappreciated superpower that most software engineers pay very little attention to. So in this video, I'll share some simple and practical tips to help you create an ergonomic workspace that will not only promote comfort and well-being, but also greatly optimize your focus, productivity, and cognitive output. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. If you're new here, I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have about 20 years of experience in the industry where I've held diverse software engineering roles and created a few tech startups. And I'm currently at Microsoft. If you are new to my channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, consider subscribing and follow me at Engineering with Utsa for monthly Q&As and behind the scenes. Ergonomics is the science of designing the workspace to fit you rather than forcing you to adapt to the environment. So it is important for you to adjust your space to your habits and your body type as much as possible. So let's start with some tips on setting up your workspace properly. And after that, I will also talk about some strategies that you can use to optimize movement and mobility. I will link everything I'll show in the video in the description below, but you don't have to get what I recommend. You can choose to customize whatever you already have or get products that you like. The more important thing here is for you to understand uh, and put these ergonomic principles into practice. Let's start with the desk. Make sure your desk is large enough so that you're not crammed for space. Keep it clean, organized, and free of distractions. While it is not necessary, I also like to keep a few things that motivate me or inspire me. For example, this 3D print of my dog or this book that reminds me to work smart. Also, your desk should ideally be a sit-stand desk that allows you to switch between the two positions frequently. I personally use an autonomous smart desk with the typical IKEA Carl B countertop. I've had this same desk for over five years now and it's been working great. As far as the screen goes, opt for one large screen over multiple ones. Having multiple screens can give you some productivity boost, uh, but it will put additional strain in your eyes and your neck as you will be frequently looking at different angles. If you have a good 4K monitor and use the right window management tools, you can achieve the same level of productivity without putting a lot of strain in your neck or your eyes. Also, please use a properly calibrated monitor that is known for its text clarity and anti-reflective properties. Don't use a TV or a poor quality monitor to read text all day. They're designed for video consumption, not reading small text for an entire day. I personally use the BenQ PD3220U because it's not only excellent for coding, but also highly color accurate for other activities such as video editing. And when you set up your screen, make sure that your eyes are level with the top 25% of the screen with a natural neck position. You should ensure this is true for both when you're sitting and standing. If your monitor for some reason does not have the adjustability, you can use a riser or a get amount that provides enough flexibility to set it up the way you want. Do your best to avoid coding for long hours on your laptop. A laptop is effective for portability, but it is terrible in terms of ergonomics. If you absolutely have to, get a laptop base or a riser so that the screen is at the appropriate level I just mentioned before. And pair it with a keyboard and a mouse. Okay, let's talk about your chair. Out of everything in this video, if you had to invest on just one thing to drastically improve your ergonomics, it should be your chair. A good chair has excellent support in the base and in the lumbar and adequate adjustment options to fit your body type. 
when setting up your chair, just remember the rule of 90 degrees. When you're sitting comfortably and upright in a typing position, the angle of your elbow and your knees should be as close to 90 degrees as possible. Your foot should not be hanging and it should be comfortably resting on the floor. If you find that your leg is a bit short to achieve this, get a simple footrest to help prop up your leg. The chair I'm using right now is the Arc Protector Y24. It's from a company called ProtoArc who specialize in ergonomic workspace products. They were kind enough to send me this early production unit for review and also have sponsored this video. I've been using it for about a month now and my experience has been great. It has all the features that a good ergonomic chair should have and then some more. It has a very supportive yet very comfortable base as they use mattress grade 50D memory foam. It has excellent lumbar support along with weight sensing recline that allows stable reclining that adapts to your weight. Not to mention this is the most amount of adjustability I've ever seen in a chair. It has a gracious amount of adjustability in terms of seat depth, recline, height and wrist rest. But that's not all of it. This is the first electric powered smart ergonomic chair with built-in airbags in the lumbar area that automatically inflate and deflate as the sensors detect changes in your posture. The chair also comes with a health management and chair control app to help you improve your posture via intelligent reminders. But there's more. You can even use this chair to relax, watch movies, or play video games because it has a neck rest and a retractable leg rest that transforms it into an incredibly comfortable lounge chair. It's clear that the engineering team went above and beyond when designing this awesome chair. The Kickstarter campaign for this chair literally launched today. So if you're interested, visit the link in the description below to get special early bird pricing. Thanks to ProtoArc for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's move on to the peripherals. Most of the repeated stress injuries occur to your wrists and your lower neck areas because of bad typing posture. When typing, your arms should hang to the side of your body and your wrists should naturally sit on the keyboard. If your arms are too far from your body or they're propped up, you aren't doing it right. When typing, the angle between your upper arm and your lower arm should be as close to 90 degrees as possible. Also, if you can, use a compact keyboard with a 75% layout. With larger keyboards, your mouse gets pushed further out, which prevents prevents your arms from hanging naturally and this can lead to shoulder issues. A smaller keyboard also allows you to use your mouse in a more natural position. Also use a mechanical keyboard if possible. You need much less key travel to actuate the keys of a mechanical keyboard compared to rubber domed keys which have you have to press all the way down. Um, this combined with proper touch typing can greatly reduce injuries to your wrists and finger joints. The keyboard I use is the Black Diamond 75 from Dry Studio but you can get the same benefits with a much cheaper keyboard like the Keychron V1. Speaking of mouse, avoid using the mouse as much as possible. Learn the shortcuts and keep your hands on the keyboard as much as you can. Of course, it's impossible to completely eliminate the mouse. So when you have to use one, use an ergonomic one like the Logitech MX Master 3 that puts your wrists in a very natural position. Okay, poorly lit environments are also big contributors to eye strain that can cause fatigue and headaches. So make sure that you work in a well lit environment. Natural light through large windows is ideal since it's known to promote good mood. But even if that's not possible, make sure your space is lit with uh, artificial daylight, ensuring that it's not too cool or too warm in color temperature. Add a high quality screen bar for additional light, especially if you like working late. I personally use the BenQ screen bar because it allows very fine adjustment of the temperature and the brightness. I'll add a quick note here on speakers. I listen to music pretty much all day and I know some other software engineers that do too. If that's the case with you, just make sure you're not listening to music on headphones or earphones all day. It's okay to use them for noise cancelling, but limit your use of them for music. Instead, go for a good pair of quality reference grade speakers that produce a flat sound that is not too colored in the frequencies, the lows, mids and highs. It's okay to prefer a certain sound profile like high bass for casual music listening, but you don't want bass pound all day or the shrill treble all day in your ears. Ideally, your speaker should also form an equilateral triangle with you for your listening position. But if that's not possible, at least make sure that both your speakers are placed at the same angle and the same distance from you, ideally at ear level. I personally use a pair of Atom Audio A8H, but like with everything else in this video, you don't have to get expensive stuff for the purpose of ergonomics. I will link some really good cheap options in the description below. 
Okay, now that we have learned how to properly set up the workspace, let me briefly talk about a few things you can do to improve your blood flow and mobility. See, sitting in the same position for hours on end shortens certain muscle fibers, especially in areas like your hips, hamstrings, and neck, reducing your mobility and limiting proper blood circulation. So start by taking frequent breaks. Switching between standing and sitting helps, but in addition to that, take periodic breaks. Grab a coffee, take your pet out, play with your kids. Anything that keeps you moving is good. If you're bad at remembering this, use a Pomodoro timer that will remind you to take a break every hour or so. Even better, do some mobility work and stretching during the break. Since your neck, back, and hips are the ones that suffer the most, I will recommend four highly effective stretches. For the first one, rest your palms face down on the edge of your desk, then walk a few steps back. Then press down with your upper body until you feel a good stretch in the upper back and neck areas and the chest areas as well. This helps open up your entire upper body. While in stretch, turn your head left and right as far as possible to stretch the neck as well. Hold for 30 seconds on each side and repeat a few times. Next, kneel down on one knee where both your knees form 90 degrees. Then push as far forward as possible with your hips until you feel a strong stretch. Hold for 30 seconds and repeat few times on each leg. Next, kneel down on one leg forming a 90 degree angle and prop the other leg on a couch. Then push backwards towards the prop leg until you feel a strong stretch in your quads. Again, hold for 30 seconds and repeat a few times on each leg. Finally, find something to hang on. If you don't have anything, a simple pull-up bar that mounts on your door can be bought from Amazon for less than 20 bucks. Hanging decompresses the spine and opens up your entire upper body. Just grab the bar and hang for 10 to 30 seconds and let gravity do the work. If you want to spice it up a bit, you can alternate with just one hand or add some pull-ups to the mix. And that's it. Hopefully these tips will help you remain focused and concentrated while taking care of your mental and physical health. This video was more about ergonomics, but if you're interested in tips and strategies for productivity for software engineers in general, like time management, calendar blocking, project management, and things like that, check these videos out. And let me know in the comments below if you have some other tips to share about ergonomics for software engineers. Please like the video if you found it useful and subscribe for more content aimed at helping you grow holistically as a software engineer. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.